Hi guys, welcome back again to our YouTube channel. My name is Lovely and for today's video, I'm going to share with you our experience on what to do next after receiving the approval for our Form I-129F petition or the case was approved by the USCIS. Let's begin. Just a disclaimer, I am not an immigration expert. And all information shared in this content is based on our personal knowledge while processing our K-1 visa. And the information contained in this video is for general purposes only. We do not make any representations as to the authenticity and fullness of information. So the first step in the process to obtain a K-1 visa is the U.S. petitioner to file and submit a petition for the form I-129F or what we call as the petition for alien fiancé with USCIS. This K-1 visa allows a United States citizen to bring his or her fiancé to the United States for the purpose of marriage and becoming a lawful permanent resident. What can we learn from this video? So in this video, we are going to talk about uh, number one, what's next after getting approved? Number two, when to receive your know what to via email and mail? Number three, how to request the NVC case number? Number four, how to check if your petition was forwarded to the correct U.S. Consular Office of the beneficiary? Number five, how to track the shipping schedule? of the NBC. Number six, how to check the status of your NBC case from the SEAC website. Let's begin. So what we did after getting our NOAA 2 in the mail is we also want to make sure that we checked our online CIS account to make sure that the status of my case should change from case was received to now case was approved. So you can check your online USCIS account or your USCIS case tracker app from your phone to make sure that the case was approved already. After receiving the approval online, your petitioner will receive the copy of the notice of action to or the approval notice. This is the confirmation that your petition has been forwarded and they will begin transferring your case. The USCIS will transfer your case to the National Visa Center or what they call the NVC. NOAA 2 includes the following important information you need in the future. So number one, your NOAA 2 document is required or is needed when you start filing for your adjustment of status. When you are already in the United States after getting married, NOAA 2 also contains the USCIS case number for tracking, the USCIS priority date or the PD date or what they call is the date of submission of the petition. It also includes or specifies the validity date of your NOAA 2. And the most important thing also is the beneficiary's alien number. Now, if you have the NOAA 2, you have to check the alien number because this is needed when you fill out the Form I-485 or the adjustment of status. So in this example, this is just a screenshot of one of the pages in Form I-129, 4I-485, sorry. And in each, every pages of the Form 485, you have to write down or you have to input your alien number. Now, you have the um, alien number, you have the NOAA 2. Now, let us now check how we can contact the National Visa Center. USCIS or what happens after USCIS sends your petition to the NVC. So, after USCIS approves your petition, they will transfer your case to the Department of, State, Department of State's National Visa Center for processing. The first step in this processing is the creation of your case in their system. So this is what we are expecting to get an NVC and we call it the NVC number. Once it's done, you can or USCIS or the NVC will send you a welcome letter by mail or 
physical mail. So you have step one, visit the NVC website, go to www.travel.state.gov, click the US visa menu, and then click the public inquiry form. Number two, step two, we can now make a public inquiry. Love, um, sorry, so you guys, you can do this inquiry at least two weeks after receiving your approval notice or know what to, okay? The petitioner or the beneficiary can submit this request, either one of them. Just make sure that you enter the correct information from the form. So what you need to enter from this form is your USCIS case number, full name of your petitioner, full name of the beneficiary, the beneficiary's date of birth, a valid email address, a copy of your know what to because you can have option to attach it, and your message or your inquiry. Click Submit. After submitting, this is the sample of an email. This is an automatic reply email from the NVC pro containing the summary of the information you provided in your public inquiry form. Once done, in two to three days, the NVC will respond to your public inquiry request if with your case number or with a case number if available so this is an example of our actual um mail that we received from nbc after receiving our case number containing the nbc case number starting in manila because the beneficiary is from the philippines all right now how can you check if the nbc forwarded your petition to the assigned beneficiaries u.s embassy or consulate general where the beneficiary will conduct his or her interview. So this is the sample of the NBC case number. It, the first three letters is the abbreviation of the overseas embassy or consulate that will process the immigration visa case. So in my case, Manila MNL is for the beneficiary who will be conducting his or her interview in the Philippines, followed by the 10 digit or followed by the other 10 digit numbers, right? All right, so now you have your NVC case number. Let us now proceed to track the NVC shipping dates. All right, so the NVC sends petition to the embassy every two weeks on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So as you can see, at the current month, it's April, and today is April 24. The NVC starts submitting or starts um, forwarding petitions to uh, to the U.S. Embassy abroad starting yesterday, 23 and 24. By this time, if you are lucky enough, you are getting an update of your NBC case number 2 in transit. So just check on the calendar dates in, in your screen and make sure that you can validate where you're shipping or what is the current status of your NBC petition. Okay, so now that you have your NVC case number and to be able to check the to check the NVC case status, you just go to the SEAC website or the Consular Electronic Application Center, click the visa status check. Okay, and then from the drop down, the visa type application is non immigrant for K1 visa, provide the location, which is Philippines, Manila and provide the application ID or what we call as the NPC case number, your passport number, and the first three letters of your surname as one of the validation. Enter the code for verification and then click submit. Once you submit, this is exactly the status of your NVC. So for the first one, your case at NVC, meaning your case is still processing at the NVC center, it has not been forwarded yet to the embassy abroad step two or the number two is the case is in transit if it's already uh provided already for provided or transmitted or forwarded to the u.s embassy abroad and after receiving that um status or the petition once the u.s embassy manila receives your case they will or it will change to ready what it means when your NBC case status changed to in transit. So once your status changed to in transit, your petitioner will receive a K1 FTP letter 
to the to his um email address and then sometimes it will not reflect in your inbox but you just have to check the spam messages under that folder because sometimes the letter from the nbc is there with an attached um, k1 ftp letter you will need or print this copy of the k1 ftp letter because you will need this during your medical appointment at saint luke's extension clinic in manila under this K1 FTP letter, it states here the case number from the USCIS, your NBC case number, principal applicant or beneficiary's name, petitioner's name, interview location, which is in Manila. If you are in Manila, in the address of the US Embassy address in Manila with a barcode on top of it. So that was just it. So once you have the K1 FTP, U.S. Embassy Manila also sends you or the beneficiary will receive a welcome letter from the U.S. Embassy Manila. In some occasions, the welcome letter being sent by the U.S. Embassy Manila do not arrive in time. So in my experience, the eligibility, uh, the, my eligibility letter was mailed to my physical address in Manila almost two months of waiting. At that time, I already have my visa on hand. So K-1 beneficiaries from the Philippines are allowed to start processing their medical appointment at St. Luke's, pay their medical fee, uh, pay their visa fee, book for the in-person interview at the Embassy of Manila, and start filling out the DS-160 form as soon as their case status is ready at the U.S. Embassy of Manila. Don't worry because the K-1 FTP letter is exactly the same as the copy of the welcome letter you will receive from the U.S. Embassy Manila. All right? Now, you have that uh, NBC case number and you said that your case is ready. So, how do we check if your case is ready at the assigned Embassy Manila? So, you just have to go back to SEAC, input the necessary information, click Submit, and it should be in this status, a sample in front of you. The NBC case status changed to case ready. If your case is ready, it means to say that you are ready for your interview or your interview will, will be scheduled at the U.S. consular section. So each uh, consular office abroad have different process when to schedule your interview. So you may check or call them, call your designated U.S. Embassy office for more information. All right. Okay, so what's next after your case is ready? All right, so you have your, your case is ready. You have so many requirements that you're going to be preparing. So this is the time that the beneficiary or the principal applicant will start gathering your requirements to prepare for, number one, to prepare for your medical appointment or your physical examination at St. Luke's Slack Extension Clinic in Manila, which we are going to be discussing in the next video how we can fill out the DS-160 form. So I'm going to make another recording for that. And how you're going to create an account to be able to schedule an interview appointment at the U.S. Embassy in Manila. All right. And what are other supporting documents, including the um, affidavit of support that you need from your petitioner and so on and so forth. So those are some of the topics that we are going to be discussing in my next video up next so guys what is your current status of your k1 visa application right now let me know in the comment section down below so let's get connected so we can respond if you have questions let me know in the comment section you can also subscribe to our youtube channel by clicking the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you can get updates from me when I start uploading next videos, all right? Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a good day ahead and we'll see you on my next vlog. Bye!